Will you reform welfare again so it's fair to the middle class and the real poor, poor people? Well, well let, me, let me talk about welfare. It's a good question. Look, I actually think that some changes in welfare were needed uh, back, in, back in the 90s because, because you had some folks who were working hard and still poor. You had some folks who weren't working. And it was important for everybody to take responsibility for making an effort to find a job, to raise a family, to look after your children. All right, now, what is true, though, is that after welfare reform, the problem was that we didn't give enough tools to people to get out of welfare. So we didn't give mothers enough child care. And if you're a single mom and you've got to go work, but now your child care is costing you as much as what you're earning on the job, then that's not a good situation. And that's why I think we've got to significantly expand the child credit so that mothers are getting more support. Transportation. Is, this is even before gas prices went up. If it cost you uh, about two hours or three hours salary just to get to the job, then you don't have enough left over to pay your bills if you have a job. So providing more assistance in terms of transportation and doing more to invest in mass transit so that people can get to and from jobs more conveniently, that's important. That's something that I'm going to commit to doing. Expanding something called the Earned Income Tax Credit, which actually Ronald Reagan supported and Bill Clinton supported, and is a very smart program because what it does is it says, look, you work, and if you're still below poverty, even though you're working, then the government, when you, during tax time, you file something, you can actually get some money from the government to try to take you above poverty. We need to expand that to make work pay. I think that is a very important strategy. <laughs> health care. A lot of entry-level jobs don't have health care. And that puts an enormous burden on families. So it is important for us to make sure that we've got a comprehensive, universal health care plan so that you know you will have health care even if your employer doesn't offer you health care. As I said before, if your employer does offer you health care, then we're going to work with your employer to lower premiums by up to $2,500 per family per year. But if you don't have health care on the job, then what we're going to do is we are going to set up a system. You can get health care similar to health care I have as a member of Congress. And if you can't pay the premiums, we will subsidize you. And you won't be excluded for pre-existing conditions. And we'll emphasize, and we will emphasize prevention so that we don't have a disease care system. We've got a health care system so that our, our, our kids are getting regular checkups. People are getting regular screenings. That will save the system money in the long term. And finally, education and job training. A lot of people on welfare may have dropped out of school. So now they're only qualified for low-skilled jobs that don't pay a lot. But if they want to get their education, it's very hard for them to work and get their education and look after the kids all at the same time. Giving them credit for going back to retrain so that they can get jobs that pay higher wages, that is something that we've got to emphasize. So those are all things that I want to institute when I'm President of the United States. Let me make one last point, though, uh, about uh, the issue of poverty and welfare that I think is very important. And that is uh, fathers have to be involved in ways that they're not involved all too often in our communities. You know, government, government can go after child support payments, and we, sh you know, the federal government needs to help state and local governments do a better job collecting child support so that kids are taken care of. But what is also true is government can't force people to be fathers. And I speak as somebody whose father left when I was two. You know, every, yeah, I know, I, I hear you. 
The, uh, it's upsetting when your dad leaves. Look, here, here's the thing is that, you know, single moms always have it tougher economically. You know, and, you know, fathers, you have to understand that, you know, being a father is not just, you know, donating. <laughs> right? It means actually be, being a part of your child's life, supporting economically, financially, emotionally. That's something we've got to talk about. All right. All right, it's a guy's turn.